In my last video, I told you I use Docker as an extra layer of protection inside my Kali VM when hacking. This is because it's isolated, clean and safer than running random scripts even inside a VM. But in this box, Docker was the very thing I escaped. So is Docker still safe or did this hack change everything? To answer that, I will show you the exact steps I used to compromise the target, detect the container and escape to full root access. So let me show you how I got in. I started with the basic and map scan and port 80 was open. I visited the website and I saw this login page. So I created an account. Then I logged in and I went through this, but I didn't saw anything special. Next, I tested the login form for SQL injection using SQL map. And as you can see, injection point found on the email field. From there, I listed the databases and I found two, the information schema and the main. The one that looked the most promising was the domain database. So I dumped the tables inside of the main database and I found these three tables. Since the user table is the one that usually has sensitive information, I dumped the contents of the user table. And as you can see, I could retrieve the admin's password hash and my uh, password hash as well. Next, I saved this password on a file and used Hashcat to crack this password. And here we have, guys, the administrator's password. Now I had admin's password, but things were just getting started. Then I returned to the website and I tried to log in as admin using the admin mail and the password that we found. And I was in, guys. Login successful. Now, as you can see, this page is similar to the one that I received when I log in with my account. The difference is this icon here, the settings icon. So I clicked on this settings icon and here we have the internal administration login page. So I logged in as admin once again using the same password. And I was on a dashboard. Now, most features didn't work. I went through all uh, these features and it didn't work. But when I clicked on settings and enter your full name, this was able to change the name. As you can see now, I was Sol the admin. So I tested it for server side template injection with this payload. And the payload was executed and this confirmed a server side template injection vulnerability in the application. After this, I searched for the server side template injection payload to trigger remote code execution. So I copied this, I pasted this here and I changed this because this payload is executing the ID command and we need a reverse shell. So, I copied this payload that will give us a reverse shell and I changed this here. I grabbed this full payload. I went back to the website. I pasted the payload here and I add a phone number. And before I clicked save all, I mounted a Netcat listener to grab our connection. I went back save all and here we have guys a reverse shell we are connected now something felt off because the host name was a bunch of numbers and letters i suspected i was inside a docker container and to confirm that i ran this command and as you can see i was indeed inside the docker container after that i ran the command who am i who am i 
and I was hot, guys. Now, containers are isolated. Docker uses things like namespaces, cgroups, to make sure that even if you are hot inside a container, you can see or touch the host. Unless the container is misconfigured. So, my next question was, did they make that mistake? So, I ran a command to see all mounted file systems. And that's when I saw the host's actual home directory was mounted into the container. At that moment, the sandbox was gone. I wasn't just hooting the container. I now had direct access to the files in the host system. So, I changed into the Augustus directory and I listed the contents of this directory. Now, I didn't saw anything interesting here. However, I thought to myself, could I SSH into the host? Because I already had the user's password from earlier. Now, I just had to see if SSH was available. And to do, the, uh, and to do that, I used which SSH? And it was, guys. Now, I had to check what the container could see on the network. So, to do that, I used IP route to grab default. And this was the IP address that I used to check if I could SSH into the host. So, SSH Augustus at this IP, sorry, this IP using the password from earlier, super administrator, and I was in, guys. As you saw, I just escaped the container. Now, this wasn't just a cool exploit, well, it was cool, but also a reminder. A reminder that Docker can become a liability if used wrong. So let's take a moment to break down what the target did wrong and what you can do to avoid the same mistakes. So, you should always create containers with non-root users. Uh, unless there's a very specific reason not to, and even then, you need tight controls. Mistake number two. The container had the host's file system mounted inside of it. That alone is a critical misconfiguration, because think about what's stored there. SSH keys, uh, browser data, saved credentials, everything personal, and all of that was exposed to anyone who gained access inside the container. Now, that isn't just bad, it defeats the purpose of the container. So, mistake number three, leaving Docker containers and images behind. Now, this isn't a mistake from this box, uh, but it's something that I've done in my own lab, and maybe you have too. So, every time you build an image in the container, Docker keeps them. Over time, this builds up and old containers and images can have outdated packages, unpatched vulnerabilities, or simply take up space. So, here's a quick Docker hygiene routine. First, change into the directory where you manage your Docker images and containers. In my case, the directory is called Hacking Sandbox. Now, once inside of it, Check for leftover containers with the command docker-ps-a. This command will list all the containers that you have created before and you didn't delete. Now, to remove all these containers, we run the command docker-compose-down remove orphans. So let's do it. Now, if you list once again all the containers, you won't have one. Next, to check for dangling or unused images, we use the command docker images. This will list all the images that you have created before, but you didn't delete. So, to delete one specific image, you use the command docker rmi and the id of that image, which in my case is this one here. So, instead of the id, you use the image id now i run i won't run this command because i will need this image later also let me just tell you that if you want to remove more than one image from this project from the hacking sandbox project you can use the command docker compose down 
dash rmi all so imagine that you have besides this one another image and you want to delete these two images then you can run this command here but only if when creating those images you used the command docker build the compose sorry compose build if you have created the images with this command then you can run this command here to delete those images now before you build a container you should always scan the image first i always scan my docker images using trivi a simple but powerful command line interface tool that checks for known vulnerabilities now first we need to know the the name of the image and to do that we use the command docker images so this is the name of the image and now we can use trivi to scan the image so trivi image hacking sandbox kali now let's see if i have any vulnerabilities on my image okay it seems that i have zero vulnerabilities now from this you can go ahead and create your container now let me just tell you that you don't need to delete the images every time because if those images don't have any vulnerability you can use them uh, freely okay guys and that's it guys i hope you liked this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider subscribing to this channel for more content like this and remember that you should always keep your docker clean and your systems safe thank you for watching see you next time stay curious and stay safe bye bye